Hey there, this is kind of an impromptu video. I hadn't intended to uh, to do this, but I got a couple questions and they were such that I can kind of kill two birds with one stone. So one of the questions was on how to use the uh, solve banded uh, function from SciPy. And the second was uh, the use of a forward differencing formula to solve differential equations. So we will use the same uh, differential equation that I did when um, extending our linear case to the nonlinear uh, examples for solving boundary value problems. And we'll stick to linear because of the solve banded, um, solve banded problem. So uh, in the past, I've just used the central difference type of uh, differencing formula to approximate the derivatives. And so I'm going to use that again to, for the solve banded uh, portion. And then for our kind of more, uh, uh, I don't want to say traditional, but what I've been doing more of, uh, kind of building a sparse matrix and inverting it, we will um, use a different type of uh, differencing formula. I'm not quite sure how it's going to work. I kind of foresee some problems using a forward differencing formula, but we'll we'll play a, play around with it and see if we can get it to work. Okay, uh, with all that said, let's just get into a notebook. Okay, so for the import, uh, this is just our matrix, our sparse matrix stuff that we're going to be using uh, when we do the, the forward difference thing and the solve banded um, function from SciPy. And also I might bring in the cubic spline uh, just um, for potentially for diagnostic purposes. Okay, so the uh, this is the differential equation we're going to solve and for the uh, solve banded we are going to use a central difference Sorry about that. I hope the uh, dog barking doesn't come through in the recording, but I have the windows open as opposed to turning on the air because uh, summer is coming in Southern California and it tends to get toasty, uh, toasty out here. So we're going to be using the central uh, difference approximation to approximate the se second derivative. So uh, with our boundary conditions here, I've kind of written out like um, um, a six point kind of uh, discretized uh, version and then in matrix form it's here, we factor it. We've done all this before. And uh, because we're going to kind of reuse some of this code, up here I've already defined the x values. So uh, this is our x values. We have n points. And then I calculate this delta, which is the grid spacing uh, that we're going to use to, to solve this problem. So, so this is how the solve uh, banded function is called. Uh, the required parameters are basically these here. Uh, so we're going to have what, what they call... Uh, L and U, which are the number of uh, non-zero diagonals below the main diagonal and above. So in our case, it's a tri-diagonal matrix. So we have the main diagonal, a line above, and a line below. So L would be 1 and U would be 1. In this example here, um, <clears throat> it would be this line here represents the main diagonal. So it would be 1 above and these two would be the, the um, diagonals below the main. Uh, the second uh, entry here is what they call AB. Uh, these are the entries for the di those, all those diagonals. And it is format formatted as such. It's basically a, a rectangular array where each row of the array is, an, as, is one of those diagonals. So the one that has the same dimension as the um, system we're trying to solve, for, for example, in this system, there are five, um, uh, it's a five dimensional five by five matrix. So the row that has all of these things, all of these elements corresponds to the main diagonal. Everything above it corresponds to diagonals above and everything below corresponds to diagonals below. And I hope this is clear, but it should become clear when we actually build it. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the rows that are above the main diagonal are padded from the left-hand side with zeros. So, so in this case, this row is directly above the main diagonal, so you need, it has one fewer elements in the main diagonal, so the first element of this, this row has to be zero. And likewise, for rows below, it's padded by zeros from the right-hand side. So again, um, the first diagonal below the main will be one, you know, one element short, one element shorter than the main. So we have one zero and then the one two elements, two diagonals below the main, you know, you need to pad with two zeros. So hopefully this will become clear when we build our system. And then B uh, here, where's B? B here in the way we call the function is our vector of knowns. 
So um, actually, I forgot to define our known vector. So let's come up here and say knowns is equal to np dot zeros. <clears throat> Sorry, it's x dot size. And the first element of our knowns is going to be uh, the left-hand boundary condition, and then the, the, the last element would be, which it's already set to zeros, but it would be the right-hand boundary condition. So let's come up here and explicitly uh, set those. So knowns zero is equal to one, and knowns minus one is equal to zero. So as we said a moment ago, our matrix, these are, our matrix is tridiagonal, so we uh, have a line below and a line above. So I'll call it LU. It's going to be defined as just one, one. So the left-hand number here is the number of diagonals below the main. The one on the right-hand side is the diagonals above the main. So what I think I'm going to do is create three variables called upper, main, and lower. And then when we call the function, we'll kind of pack these together into a list. So our upper um, upper diagonal is basically, um, with the exception of this zero here, is all just ones, and that's multiplied by, uh, or it's divided through by delta squared. So this is going to be np dot ones, and the length of it is n. And then we need to divide it through by, um, let's just do this, divided by delta squared. Uh, this lower one here, where's my uh, cursor? This lower diagonal here is the same. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. And our main is minus 2 divided by uh, delta squared. And then we have to add 1 to it. So uh, np dot ones. Let's actually do this. Let's go minus 2 divided by delta squared times np dot ones. It's n elements long. And then we need to add 1 to it. Let me just see if it runs uh, if, without any typos. It seems to. So now we need to just kind of adjust it here. Um, the first element of the main is going to end up being 1. So let's just fix that uh, right now. So main 0 is equal to 1. And likewise, the last element is equal to 1. So main minus 1 is equal to 1. For the upper one, we need to pad it with a 0, plus the first element is actually 0. So the first two elements of up, uh, upper Sorry about the siren. Uh, where was I? The first two elements of upper need to be zero. So upper, and I'll just do these explicitly. Uh, upper zero is equal to one, and upper one is equal to one. And for lower, it's the last two, because we need a, um, the last element is zero again here. It's the, these zeros here. And then we need to pad it with a zero. So let's just do lower minus one is equal to zero. And lower minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so far I've avoided typos. So let's just pack these up, um, like the documentation says, into a variable called AB, and we will do upper, main, and lower. And that should be all we need. So y is equal to solve banded, our LU variable, our a, b variable, and our knowns variable. Let's see if this runs. So far, so good. Let's plot out the solution. plt dot plot x comma y, and we'll make it a black line. Uh, perfect. Looks good. Um, I will try to comment this section out and uh, type in some documentation about what all these upper, lower, you know, and, and how these things are actually built here. And, um, but I'll do that after the fact. And right now, let's just go on to the um, forward difference portion. Okay, so for the forward difference, um, I also copied the stuff from the central difference here. Uh, just remember the, the second derivative at the point x sub i. 
uh, uses information at y sub i, one point above, so that would be y sub um, i plus one, and one point below i sub um, i, y sub i minus one. So we got the system of equations. Again, this is just copied from above. Um, now for the central difference approximation, I mean the forward difference uh, approximation, uh, the second derivative at x sub i um, is going to use information at y sub i, and then y sub i plus 1, and then y sub i plus 2. So we're looking kind of out forward uh, to subsequent data points uh, to, to do this differencing scheme. So these are the equations you're going to get. This is the, the first one is still the same. It's uh, y1 is equal to 1, which is our boundary condition. You get this equation here subsequent equation and so on up to and again this is a six counts so we go up to y sub six but you see uh, the problem here so this is our boundary condition here our boundary point here um, is index number six but this equation here has an index number seven so right away this is a problem and another problem is there are no equations here to couple y1 into any of these uh, subsequent equations. So if you look at any of these, there's no y1 in here. So um, again, that's going to be a problem. So what I'm going to do is just kind of ignore both of these issues right now and code this up. I'm going to do this off of recording because we've done this type of thing several times before and then talk through it and then maybe uh, come up with a visualization to show some of these problems and then kind of figure out a way around that. So let me do that now. Okay, so here is the um, forward difference implemented in code. Again, um, I set n equal to 100 points. We calculated our, our x grid, our, di our spacing difference between the, those x points. Um, here is our matrix that capture these values here. So 1, minus 2, and 1. Uh, we build our second derivative matrix here. So now our diagonals, we have our main diagonal. We have an element. Um, Sorry, I bumped a key there. Uh, we have our main diagonal, and we're going to have an element, a row, uh, a diagonal above that one, and a diagonal above that one. So that would uh, correspond to like this here. We have our y2, which is on the main diagonal. Oops, there's a typo in this equation here. Uh, this one is correct. So we have y3, uh, then we go y4, 1, 5. So this one is on the main diagonal. That one is right immediately above that, and this one is immediately above that you know, that, that previous one. Uh, let me fix this just uh, so I don't forget about it later. That looks better. Okay, so we build our diagonal matrix. Again, we build the identity matrix and we kind of co uh, compensate for our boundary conditions here. So this is our, our differential equation that we're trying to solve and then we, we set the boundary conditions. So the first row uh, reflects this y equals 1, and this last row um, reflects y equals 0, and then we just solve it. So I've already solved it here, and you can see uh, we have a, an issue. So it gets the first point right and the last point right, but everything else in between is wrong, and not surprisingly, it's because of these issues we talked about here. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to cut this down from 100 to 6, just like our equation, um, our, our system up here just so this is a little easier to see. And to diagnose this problem, um, let's do a plt.figure, plt.spym. So here's a visualization of what that matrix uh, looks like. So visually, visually, we can kind of see that this initial point here is not tied into any of these subsequent points down here. So for like um, this second row here, row two, you see that these two points are, are linked to these two points here, but there's nothing to link, you know, the point at zero to the point at, uh, at, at one. And we also have the issue here that this one uh, technically needs a, a, you know, a Y7 out here, which we don't have. So um, <clears throat> if we want to use the forward different method, we have to compensate for that and maybe use like a central difference, central difference method for this bottom row or not second to bottom row here and the second row here. So let me go up uh, to the code and I'm just gonna manually modify this M matrix to implement uh, central difference methods for these two rows. Okay, so here's the code that just manually modifies the uh, second row of the matrix and the second to last row to implement central differencing. 
Um, so let's run that. And we see we really don't get uh, that much better results. It's a little better in that the second point kind of is a little more sensical, but you still get a lot of problems here. Um, not quite sure what's going on here. This matrix, uh, the, these points are now algebraically coupled, you can see, but uh, something is still going amiss. I don't know if it's quite an indexing problem or what. Um, we can make this a backward differencing equation easily enough by just doing this. Um, and if we crank our points up to 100 again, This seems to work reasonably well. Um, not entirely. There's a problem here at the end. So I don't know exactly what's going on here. It could also be a stability issue. Uh, some of these numerical integration schemes are, are uh, not really stable. Uh, I haven't talked about this in previous videos because it's one of those things where in very specific cases you can kind of solve and show that certain algorithms are stable. But in other cases, it, in most cases, it's just not, um, not possible. And usually uh, it's not that big of a deal because when it's unstable, it just blows up on you or something goes really wrong. Um, let me see if forward difference actually works with a higher number of points. So delete that, delete that. You see, no, it, it really doesn't. <clears throat> so I think I'm just going to upload this as is. Uh, I might look, look over it again to see if there's some sort of... Um, indexing error that's kind of causing this with the central difference uh, corrections for these lines but um, this is one of the reasons I basically default to a central difference uh, di di differentiation scheme uh, when at all possible. Cool so at least conceptually it's pretty simple but um, these things are always cases where the devil is in the details and you have to get all the bookkeeping correct. So uh, if you find any errors I made with the, uh, the forward and backward differencing formulas and, and the matrix uh, indexing please let me know. It can be a bit of a, a pain in the butt especially once you've been staring at it for a while. So I'm going to call it quits and uh, until later I'll see you.